Welcome back to Nick's Adventrex. Today, I'm following up my last video, which was about Emerald Bay on the west side of Lake Tahoe, home to Vikings Home, the mansion of Ms. Laura Knight back in the 1920s and 30s, with the other eccentric millionaire on the other side of the lake, the east side of the lake, the Thunderbird Lodge, home to a one Mr. George Whittell Jr who I will also be placing into my Lake Tahoe Eccentric Millionaire Club right at the top. You can get a first-hand look at this particular millionaire I'm going to tell you about. George Wittell. This guy, wow. He made his millions, you know, the old-fashioned way, by inheriting them. George Wattell Jr. inherited millions from his father, George Wattell Sr., who made his money in real estate and as one of the founders of PG&E. For those of you not familiar with those letters, that is Pacific Gas and Electric, the utility company that serves Northern and Central California. When his dad passed away, he inherited a bunch of money and it was all in the stock market. And George Wattell, and a lot of people think that this, this sounds a little suspicious, um, like maybe he had some insider knowledge, but he pulled out all of his money before the great crash for the depression, uh, pulled it all out. And one of the things that he did with all that money is he bought a bunch of land in Lake Tahoe. When the depression hit, many people were hit hard, but not George, he was loaded. And with this money, he helped foster a deal to buy much, if not all of the Nevada side of Lake Tahoe from Round Hill in South Lake Tahoe, all the way up to Crystal Bay, the Cal Neva state line in North Lake Tahoe. At some point, the other investors left and or were forced out of the deal. So George ended up owning roughly 95% of the Nevada side of the lake. He owned a lot. He was like the real life Ben Cartwright from the Ponderosa. And if you're familiar with the Ponderosa um, television series, uh, Ben Cartwright owned pretty much all of the east side of Lake Tahoe and the Carson Valley. It, it was ridiculous. <laughs> but anyway, this guy, George Wattell, he didn't own anything in the Carson Valley, but he owned a lot. He built this beautiful, it's not a sprawling mansion. It's not, like if you're gonna compare him to William Randolph Hearst, like Hearst Castle, it's not, gigantic and uh, majestic and European like that. Well, it's a little bit European, but it's not that big. Uh, he built a, like a little mini castle um, home on the east side of Lake Tahoe. It has kind of a, I don't know, to me, kind of Norwegian, Germanic look to it. Wittell hired respected California and Nevada architect Frederick DeLongchamp to design his Tahoe summer retreat. The architecture of the Thunderbird Lodge is unique. Some call it a Tudor revival style, while others label it Scandinavian. It's made of stone construction, similar to the West Side's Vikings home in Emerald Bay, and it has sharply angled roofs meant to stand up to the severe Sierra Nevada snowpack. In the kitchen of his house, there's a little secret passageway down into a long granite tunnel and this granite tunnel takes you to a boat garage that comes out of the granite right onto Lake Tahoe because where the, his house is it's nestled in this little cove. Um, it's very close to Sand Harbor and the cool thing about his home I think it's owned by the state of Nevada or I don't know, it's, it's some charitable trust situation and they give tours to the public so you can pay a fee to go check it out and I've done it and oh my god it is so cool. The Thunderbird Lodge is owned by the nonprofit Thunderbird Preservation Society. They offer public tours of the property where you take a shuttle from the visitor center in Incline Village to the estate just south of Sand Harbor. George Wattell, this guy, um, he had a pet lion. He would fly in a polar bear for parties and he would fly in a baby elephant. 
and the baby elephant didn't do too well up at high altitude so I, I think the baby elephant only hung out for like maybe a week and then he sent the baby elephant home to wherever the baby elephant's home was um, so loved his animals he had greyhounds there's pictures of him with greyhounds um, and interestingly enough you know the guy loved animals but he was a hunter because when you go and take the tour you see these pelts of uh, like lions and wh whatever big game animals so it's kind of weird it's kind of a dichotomy of he likes to hunt he likes dead animals he likes live animals and he would have incredible poker parties he'd invite celebrities to have poker parties the people that he really liked inviting over were showgirls scantily clad showgirls to his house because you know remember we're talking about the Nevada side, um, he lived close to Reno, he lived close to the casinos uh, state line uh, here in Lake Tahoe. In fact, I think one of the casinos had a light and whenever there was a high stakes poker game, it was kind of like a, like a lighthouse light so he could see it from his house. Whenever there was a high stakes poker game going on at this casino, they'd flip the light on George would see it and he'd get in his gorgeous uh, motorboat and drive over to the casinos and jump in one of these poker games. But for the most part, he was kind of known as a recluse. If I had that house, I'd rarely leave it either. <laughs> it was, it's amazing. He even was starting construction on an indoor swimming pool uh, down in the caves. So it was a room that was an offshoot from the tunnel cave, but during construction, one of the construction workers, uh, they died, um, fell into the hole that they were digging for the pool, and he never finished construction. So if you go through the tour, you'll see that the pool still looks like it's under construction. So that's kind of a sad little bummer part of the George Wattell story. But to bring it back to the eccentricness, Another room that's an offshoot from the underground tunnel is the opium den. Yeah, an opium den. I mean, this is back in the day, you know, when controlled substances were not illegal. You know, Congress hadn't gotten involved in all of that stuff. No schedule, whatever, class drugs. So, yeah, uh, if you wanted to stone out on opium, and you were invited at the George Wattell's house, there was a place to do that. So if you ever come up to Lake Tahoe and you wanna do something really fun, really interesting, go to the Thunderbird Lodge. It is really spectacular and amazing, great views. Basically, uh, you, you can't actually drive there yourself. You go to Incline Village, you park at the Incline Village Visitor Center, and then you take a shuttle bus. Uh, and get the tour by one of the docents. And they also open it up um, if you want to rent it out for weddings or sometimes they do wine tastings, uh, that's available as well. I'm driving up along the west coast of Lake Tahoe right now. This is a gorgeous part because you're right at the water. I love driving right here. So this is the California side and I'm going up north on the west side and gonna come around Incline Village so I can get some good shots of George Wattell's incredible house. And here's another beautiful part of Lake Tahoe on the west shore side of California. Again, you're right up on the lake. We are in Kings Beach right now, which is on the California side. I think it's just before you hit the Nevada state line. I'm not sure, all these little towns kind of run together in my mind. But some real ace of a poker player played Wattel a hand of poker and he lost Kings Beach to this 
poker player. Can you imagine winning this land in a poker hand? There are conflicting reports that say card shark Joe King, one-eyed Joe King, won the land in an all-night poker game with Wittell, while other historians think it's more plausible that he won the money in the game to buy the land. Whatever the case may be, it was a poker game with Wittell that led Joe King owning the land and how King's Beach got its name. Yeah, I hope he invested wisely, I, I'm, or I hope he sold wisely. I wonder if he still owns part of this area. Because, man, that's a, that's a pretty cool poker score right there. And now we are crossing the state line from California into Nevada. Here's the famous Cal Neva Resort that Frank Sinatra once owned. And then, what's his face from Oracle? Larry Ellison owned it, and recently he sold it to somebody else. And I remember when all these places were open. This Tahoe Biltmore is closed. Welcome, Welcome to Nevada. Nevada. All right, well, we've just driven through Incline Village. We've gone up and around the north side of the lake, and now we're coming back, headed south on the east side of the lake. And I'm gonna try to find a place to pull over when we're in the vicinity to show you the Thunderbird Lodge. You'll notice that this east side of Lake Tahoe is not as built up with residences as compared to the west side that we were driving on earlier, and that is because of George Wittell. Wittell is sometimes referred to as the accidental conservationist, and that is because he hoarded his Tahoe land. He did want to construct a casino in the Sand Harbor area, but as he grew into his older years, he became more reclusive and held tight to his land holdings. Eventually, the state of Nevada stepped in using eminent domain and forced Wattel to sell the land that is now Sand Harbor and Incline Village. After Wattel's death in 1969, more of his land was sold to both Nevada State Parks and the U.S. Forest Service. And so, because of Wattel, the northeast Nevada side of Lake Tahoe remains pristine and untouched for us all to enjoy. Beautiful sand harbor right over there on the right. So right there on that point is the George Wattel estate. I'm gonna get out and I'm gonna take out my zoom lens and I am going to take some pictures and some video and show you what it's all about. On the point of where the estate resides is the main house of Wattel's Thunderbird Lodge. After Wattel's death, Jack Dreyfus, a very successful financial expert, bought the property and added a structure known as the Dreyfus Great Room with large picture windows overlooking the lake. From here to the left of the main house at water level, you can also see the windows of the uncompleted pool, which if you recall is accessed by the underground tunnel. Also at water level to the far left of the main house is the boathouse, which housed, and still houses, George Wattell's custom Thunderbird yacht. The yacht is in working condition and is still used to this day.
In between the boathouse and the pool windows, there's another small house-like structure that matches the main house's architecture. That is the card house. This is where Wittell invited his friends, including Howard Hughes, to play high-stakes poker with him. It's said millions of dollars were transferred in this room. So that is George Wittell's estate right over there. You can see it from Nevada 28. There's a lot of car traffic, so it's kind of busy right here. Um, but it's just south of Sand Harbor. So if I turn around, you can see Sand Harbor right over there. And they, uh, like I said, they do give tours of his estate, his mansion, his eccentric <laughs> underground tunnel and opium den. Uh, obviously you have to pay a fee, um, but it's pretty magnificent. I would highly recommend uh, taking the tour. He had no neighbors, completely secluded, cut off. And like I said, he could see all the way over from his house, all the way over to state line where the casinos were, they would have a light that would go off when there was a high stakes poker game going down. And then he'd jump in his boat. I think his boat was also called the Thunderbird and that's still there so you can see his boat. Jump in his boat and head over and uh, jump in on one of those high stakes poker games. As you continue to drive south, you will see the entrance for the uh, Thunderbird Lodge, which is right here. And there's a guard shack right up there. So the address is 5000 Highway 28. <laughs> Thanks for joining me on this adventure to another of Tahoe's eccentric millionaires, George Wattell Jr. and his Thunderbird Lodge. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, please do subscribe. Every subscription really means a lot to me and this little channel I call Nick's Adventrex. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next adventure.